So I'm Total War here, and today we've got a tier list using Tier Maker, this time covering the Lizardman unit roster, which was the most requested one after we did the uh, the Dark Elf unit roster. Alright, so this one's going to be a bit different from the previous High Elf and Dark Elf ones, because the Lizardman roster is actually a bit bigger than the uh, unit roster, and we also need to take into consideration Blessed Units. Now, I don't have the unit cards for the Blessed Units in here. I'm going to have a separate section at the end of the video. At the, at the, like the last part of the video for uh, the blessed variants. Okay, we're gonna categorize this. Uh, most of the units are monsters, but we're gonna categorize it as um, in terms of the timeline: melee infantry first, then missile units, then um, uh, cavalry-based units, flying units, and then pretty much <laughs> half of their roster is just monsters. And that'll just be like the the back half of the of the video. And don't forget as well that these ratings are based off legendary difficulty, of very hard battle difficulty, based around campaign play, not based on multiplayer, not based on mods. And um, we don't just, this isn't a strength ranking video because anybody can do that, that's really easy. But it's based on how useful they are on the campaign. How convenient they are to recruit, how expensive they are, how well they perform for their, um, you know, for their tier, and how you how, how likely you are to get some use out of them on the campaign for when they are available. You know, if you're getting super strong units early, obviously that's going to be uh, more valuable than getting a weaker, maybe more fun unit uh, that shows up at tier five sort of thing. Anyway, let's uh, let's go into this now. So starting with the most basic unit, the Skink Cohort. Uh, this is a very conven uh, convenient unit to recruit because it is um, doesn't require a barracks, but neither does its other variant, the Skink Cohort with Javelin. And when given the choice of these two, um, you should always, in my opinion, go with the Skink uh, Javelin Cohort because the missile attack is just vastly better than just not having a missile attack, even though they are slightly more expensive. So I'm going to put the regular cohort in the trash. There's really no reason to ever recruit this in campaign, uh, because anytime you can recruit them, you can also recruit these. There's no unit caps, so there's just these guys here will just never deliver anywhere near as much value as these guys here. Um, even even though they are just slightly cheaper, my recommendation is to steer clear from this unit. It's way too weak, and it will struggle against Skaven Slaves. Not recommended at all. Next up are the uh, Red Crested Skinks. Uh, this one's not a terrible unit. I think I'm going to put it as um, C tier. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it as C tier, because uh, they are they are very squishy. They're a little bit more expensive than the skin cohort. They at least they dish out some damage, but it's going to be very difficult to get them to use their actual value in a battle. So I would. It's just not really a super recommended unit, but not horrible either. So definitely not trash. Um, the armor piercing definitely does help, but the fact that it's a melee infantry unit really does make it difficult. Uh, I know that people will meme on the fact that, oh look, and it's another unit tier list where he puts melee infantry down the bottom. Not every single melee infantry unit will be put down the bottom in all situations. It largely just depends on whether or not they have special abilities. There are some melee infantry out there, probably not in the Lizardman, that might hit A tier, but they have to have some kind of special ability. They can't just be I got big stats, because those big stats are always dropped down whenever they enter the battlefield, and you've got to consider that winning the battle is about gaining a balance of power value, not just about strong unit versus strong unit. On Legendary Difficulty Campaign, it's quite often you're going to be uh, going up against the odds, and you need units that can deliver above their value, and melee infantry, on average, will most likely deliver way lower than their value because even if they go up against the exact same unit the enemy units are like 40 to 60 percent stronger depending on how much experience because you've got to keep in mind that on legendary difficulty the ai get like one tier of experience like just about every single turn so if their armies existed for about 10 turns they could be in gold tier of experience and your guys might have none so that might mean nine extra melee attack melee defense and leadership that's huge right especially in the early game and then once you get into the battlefield those stats are augmented by an additional like 
20% melee defense, 20% melee attack, 15% weapon strength, and extra 10 leadership, and then you lose 10 leadership. So those are all the stats that melee infantry rely on. So your units are going to rout way earlier than theirs. Theirs are going to fight to the death, and theirs are going to take less damage and dish out more damage. There's a humongous difference. This is why melee infantry just always ends up being dumpstered down. Now, if you're playing on normal battle difficulty, you're probably not going to notice that as much, but those are th just things to keep in mind. Anyway, uh, next up are the Chameleon Stalkers. Now, you could argue that this is a missile unit, but it is... It is primarily, I think, a melee infantry unit that just has a precursor missile unit. It's only got like one ammo with it. Um, I'm going to put it under B tier. It's a pretty decent unit. Um, if you're in the early stages of the campaign, you don't have anything else to recruit. This is definitely a unit that you can somewhat rely on. The best thing about this one here is that it can stalk. That could be really useful for gaining like some sort of... Uh, like separating the enemy army into multiple like groups. Se separate from, from, from each other, and then ambush them with a whole bunch of Chameleon Stalkers. That can work out quite well. Now, you can't do that with Saurus Warriors unless there's lots of trees in the way, and also they're super slow, whereas these guys here are quite fast. Melee infantry that can stalk or are really quick and can actually outrun other infantry units that they'll come up against will always have higher value than slow, strong units uh, with high stats, just because you can tactically use them a lot better than just, I got I got more melee defense or more melee attack than you. Unfortunately, that just doesn't matter as much as actually application on the battlefield. So that's why these guys here are getting, uh, they're going to be much higher tier than the, the Saurus units. Alright, next up, covering the Saurus units. Uh, this one here, I think, is the, the anti-infantry, well, it's not even anti-infantry, the non-spear unit. Um, I'm going to put that as trash, and same thing with the spear unit, because I think in the last update they went from being a tier 1 unit to being a tier 2, which doesn't make sense in my opinion. This is definitely a tier 1 unit. If this is a tier 0, this is tier 1. This is not tier 2. They do not belong on tier 2. If they were tier 1, I would have put them here, but they're not. So their cost and what they can dish out damage on the battlefield on very high battle difficulty these are not a recommended unit um my advice is just skip this unit entirely it's just not a good troop if you're going to get saurus warriors like you got your heart set on it you just really want saurus warriors my recommendation is get the spear uh, sorry the spear the shielded variants because that extra melee defense is gonna really help at having them have staying power keep them alive a lot longer so that your actual good units can win the battle, whether that be with magic or missiles or monsters or whatever it is that you need, would not really recommend relying entirely on Saurus Warriors, unless you're playing something like Gorok or Krokgar, because Krokgar makes them cheap and Gorok makes them strong. Those are those are exceptions, but just in a generic lord, mm -mm, keep keep these guys out, they're not, they're not worth it. So these ones here I'm going to put under C tier, but if you're going to choose one over the other, I would definitely go with the spear variant, because usually given the choice over anti-large or not anti-large, I'll choose anti-large because the uh, the other one, this one here, it's not actually anti-infantry. They don't have a bonus versus infantry. This got a higher melee attack and slightly higher weapon strength. But don't underestimate that bonus versus large, especially on very hard battle difficulty. They'll eat up cavalry way quicker, way, way, way quicker than these variants. And even though you're not going to be going up against tons of cavalry, they can still be very disruptive if they're cycle charging. So that's very useful. Having a mix of them could work as well. Then you've got the Temple Guard. Now this is definitely a trash unit because this troop is tier 4 that is not doesn't behave at a tier 4 level, it's really expensive and they take two turns to recruit. Just not a convenient unit to recruit at all. I used to recruit a whole bunch of them in my armies because I, you know, in my very early days of playing Warhammer 2, I used to think, oh, it's high stats, good in auto resolve or might actually do some damage, but they almost always let me down. Um, if they go up against any sort of infantry, even if it's lower tier than them, let's just say they go up against a white line of crates, which is a tier 3 unit. On very hard battle difficulty, the Saurus, uh, the uh, Temple Guard, are probably going to lose. So if you've got engagements where majority of the time you're going to lose, and they're very slow as well, so, you know, you can't really dictate all the engagement that they're going to fight, um, they're just not really a great unit. But, you know, if you, if you absolutely need an anti-large infantry unit, because you're going up against loads of uh, cavalry or monsters, like maybe if you're going up against Bretonia, um, then yeah, maybe you could recruit it, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. You've got better options, so I'm going to put uh, Temple Guard in the trash, just because of how inconvenient and expensive they are. 
Uh, they they should, in my opinion, take one turn to recruit and be tier three at like most. Same thing with basically. I think it should be tier one, tier two, tier three. That's what I think. Not when it's current state where it's tier two, three, and then four. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that's all the melee infantry. Let's move on to the missile infantry. But there's only a few of them. So starting with the uh, the skin cohort. Now you could sorry skin cohort with javelin. You could argue this is primarily a melee infantry unit because um, it's a uh, it's only got three shots, but I primarily use it as a missile unit because uh, that's that's the main difference between that and the the regular skink. Um, it's got th essentially three volleys, and those three volleys are pretty damn dangerous at close range, and uh, they're really cheap. So I'm going to put these here under B tier. They definitely aren't A tier worthy because they're not like high off archers or dark shards or anything like that. But in the early stages of the campaign, like playing as Master Mundi, I usually gravitate towards getting a skink cohort, just because they're nice and cheap. And by not building a barracks, it allows you to build a growth building or a public order building or a, a, basically an, an economic building, allowing you to grow faster. As opposed to prioritizing a military building, you'll slow down your growth. Because as the lizard men, you want to rush to tier 4 as quickly as possible, because that's where all their strength really lies. Their tier 1, 2, and 3 is really quite awful. So these guys here can help you do that by not requiring a barracks. Then you've got the Skink Skirmishers. I'm going to put them under Trash. I don't think there's any reason to really recruit them because there's a better variant, uh, the Chameleon Skink. I would put this under B tier because this one here can stalk. It's just a better missile unit. Um, you can get a fair bit done with the, uh, the, the Chameleon Skink. I definitely don't think it's an A tier unit. Um, but I think I think for it, what is it, tier three unit? Let me just uh, confirm that. All right, skinks are. Let me see. Oh no, no, it's a tier two. Chameleon skinks are tier two, and the uh, skink skirmish is a tier one. Mm. All right, if it's only tier one, that's not too bad. Okay. I very rarely recruit them, so okay. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll make that C tier. Uh, but yeah, that's a tier two unit. Making that's actually a bit more viable than I thought. Um. I don't think it belongs in A tier though, uh, unless you're playing as uh, Oxyodal, so putting in an Oxyodal's army I'd put it under A tier, definitely wouldn't get Doomstack, uh, but B tier I think is suitable for them, yeah I think that'd do for that. Okay, next up is uh, Cavalry Units. Now we've got uh, Cold Ones here, now these ones here could be argued as monsters because they, they don't have anyone riding them. But since they have a si similar number of entities as the Cavalry, they sort of count as like really really trashy low tier cavalry even if they don't have a rider so i'm gonna treat them as such i'm gonna put the cold ones feral cold ones under trash because they are just pure rubbish they beat nothing in melee on very high battle difficulty they go rampage almost straight away this is not a unit worth recruiting the only time i would get this unit is if i was using a rider primeval glory army and then just summon them um not a recommended unit at all um, probably more of a multiplayer thing, this one. I'm, I'm not sure. Then we've got the two variants of the Cold Ones. You've got the Cold One Spear Riders and then the Cold One Spear Riders with Shields. They're going to end up in the trash. Tier 3 units that don't belong at Tier 3 and just very poorly before performing. Uh, if we go and have a little look at the Cavalry. Um, so Cold One Spear Riders, Cold One Riders and uh, Horned Ones, they all... Hang on. Yeah, so they've, they've all got shields, but the uh, the Cold One Riders are armor-piercing, and the Cold One Spear Riders, they're anti-large and armor-piercing, right? Okay. And, um, yeah, see, this is the reason why, the primary reason why I think they're crap. For one thing, um, predatory sensors, as a cavalry unit that goes rampaging, like, this is a unit that you need to micro. You need to cycle charge, you need to go for favorable engagements. If this thing goes rampaging, and you've lost control of it, it's of no value to you. This is the main reason why I hate Cold One units. Also, they have 48 units as opposed to 60, with other factions having cavalry. Just because these guys here have higher stats, doesn't mean that they should drop down 12 entities, in my opinion. Not not a good unit at all. And the, another reason that I think they suck is their low speed. I think that any cavalry unit, 
that has less than 75 speed is really not worth recruiting. You need a minimum of 75 speed to catch most infantry units um, if they've got some kind of poison attack or something. So um, these ones here can really struggle running enemy units down. Now the horned ones on the other hand, these ones here having 78 speed, they still suffer from primal instincts uh, and they are significantly more expensive, but because they've got so much speed, I'm going to not put them as trash. I'm going to put them as C tier. Now, we did have a Doomstack sent in of them recently, but that was really, really beefed up Horde ones. And if you had put the same amount of effort into just about any amount of units, you could have made it work in that scenario. So, still not really a recommended unit. But if you're dead set on recruiting some cavalry for the Lizardmen, the Horned Ones are definitely the way to go, especially considering they're the same tier as as uh, the Cold One Spear Riders. Even if they do take longer to recruit and you do require another building, I would definitely uh, prefer these over Because these are just... I very rarely can get any use out of them. There's so few engagements where they can actually win against tier 3 or above, they'll only do particularly well against lower tier units. And that's not something you want to be putting in your army. You don't want to be putting in units that are able to beat units that are cheaper than them. You want units that can beat units that are more expensive than them or can beat several units at a time. These ones here can't do that, especially on very hard battle difficulty and because of Rampage. Alright, next up are flying units and then we'll just go monsters. Okay. Or maybe I should maybe categorize it as missile monsters and then just melee monsters. Actually, that makes more sense. Alright, so flying units first. We've got the regular Pterodon. Not a, not a completely terrible unit. I'm going to put it as C tier. Um, not really highly recommended. They don't have much damage output. They can be a massive nuisance. Uh, but there's a lot of scenarios where they just don't really perform. So, a bit of a finicky unit. And if I was going to recruit a Pterodon unit, I'd recommend getting the Fire Leech Bowler. This one here can at least dish out a lot of damage to infantry units. Um, as for the Ripodactyls, I'd probably put them as B tier as well. This is a melee unit. Uh, but you can really quite easily disrupt enemy missile units with them. And they, they can do okay against melee infantry as well, as long as they're not too high tier. But they're not overly expensive, and if you use them with tic-tac-toe, they're not too bad as well. Not horrible units, but I wouldn't rely, I wouldn't put my life on the line for them. Uh, I usually don't recruit them, but whatever. Then we've got the uh, Coatl unit. Now, I'm a little bit conflicted about this one, because uh, you could put it as a Doomstack or as an A tier. I'm going to leave it as A tier. Primarily because I think it's a bit of a derpy unit. It's good that it's got some Heaven's Magic that's got Chain Lightning. Um, and you ran on Thunderbolt. That's definitely good. But, like I said, it's a bit of a derpy unit. It's good that it can also stalk um, other units that are run underneath it. Um, but I'm wary about putting it as a Doomstack. Not a bad unit. Not a bad unit at all. Um... Definitely needs some support though. If you're playing as Tic Tac Toe, well, you've got Tic Tac Toe in your, um, like you've confederated him. Definitely recommend giving him a Coatl Doomstack because he reduces their upkeep cost by 50%, um, at least, because there's other things you can do to reduce them. So, since the Lizardman economy is not super strong, um, getting a cheap army of very strong units um, is pretty viable. So, if you wanted to put this one at Doomstack, I could certainly accept that. But based on other units in this roster here, I think I'm going to leave it at A tier. Yeah. Okay. So, next up, we're going to go... We'll go melee monsters first, and then finish it with missile monsters. And then talk about the Blessed Variants. Alright, let's start with uh, the uh, Salamander Hunting Pack. Not a terrible unit. I'm going to put that as B tier. Uh, same thing with its semi-counterpart, the Razordon. Uh, these ones these ones here doing flaming attack and have about 125 range. You could do a fair bit with them. They're not super fast. They're not super slow. They require some micromanagement, but not a terrible unit. Same thing with the Razordons. The Razordons having 100 range, but armor piercing and without fire attack is definitely good. And they're a bit more accurate than the, uh, than the uh, uh, Salamander hunting packs. So I think they're both B tier. Uh, they're, they're okay. Then you've got the, uh, the Ancient Salamander here. Um... This is this one's okay. I could I could possibly put it as A tier, maybe. Yeah, I think I put it as A tier. Single entity monsters for the Lizardmen tend to perform very well, so I'm gonna put that as A tier. Again, it's another missile monster that can actually go into melee as well. It's not bad at all. Definitely recommend having a healer if you're going to use single entity monsters. Okay. 
Next up for the missiles, let's use the Bastilodon Solar Engine. Okay, so this one I have dumped on a lot in the past. But it's not a bad unit. It's just... It, I think it used to be Tier 3. I'm not entirely sure about that because I don't play that much Lizardman these days. But it's now Tier 2. Let me just confirm that. No, it is, it's, it is Tier 3. No, no, it's, it's these ones here that are Tier 2. Right, it's Tier 3. I think it used to be Tier 4, maybe? Because I recall it being at the same tier as regular Stegodons. So because they... I th again, I can't remember. But I think they lowered the tier of it. So if they lowered it, its tier, that actually makes it more viable. So I'm actually going to put the Basilidon Solar Engine as A tier. Because for a Tier 3 unit, it's probably one of the best in the Lizardman roster. So... My my biggest problem with them is that they fire really uh, slow. They've got a very slow firing rate, and that they're slower than Stegodons. It's really important to have a good amount of uh, movement speed because if the initial engagement didn't go to your favor, it's really important to be able to have if you've managed to get rid of all their fast units and all that's left is melee infantry, outrun the opponent. And if they've only got 40 speed and they're exhausted, chances are you're not going to be able to do that. Whereas you can do that with Stegodons. Now, speaking of Stegodons, everybody knows how I feel about Stegodons. Mwah! Love your Stegodons Doomstack. Tier 4, this is my go-to unit in the Lizardman roster. And the great thing about the Lizardman, I guess, is that, in my opinion, their best unit is not a DLC unit. It's not even a Tier 5 unit. Now, the reason why the, the, uh, the Tier 4 Stegodon, so that is this boy right here, the reason why it's my favorite unit in the, uh, the Lizardman roster is because of versatility. That's what it really comes down to. You can boost them like crazy. They're, an art they're the only artillery unit in the Lizardman roster. So their Ballista, they're oftentimes called the Ballistodon. Um, they, they're the only unit that can damage walls, they can damage towers. So they're really useful. They're the most useful unit that you've got in the Siege, essentially. Apart from like magic users. Um, they're relatively fast. Speed of 50 is not bad at all for a... a for like an artillery unit so as long as you're not going up against too, something too fast you can shoot a bit and then run very useful against dwarfs as long as there's not too many slayers and they're also very good in melee and they've got a large hit point pool good leadership you know relatively so um, keeping them in a huge blob tends to work really well and they're anti-infantry in in melee really really good unit if you Proficient with Stegodons, you can get a lot done with them. And they really just complement the Lizardmen really well. Uh, they do take a long time to recruit and they are very expensive, but in my opinion, they are worth the worth the weight, worth the price. And I usually just try to rush them as quickly as I can because they just they just dominate the battlefield once you get them. Anyway. Other missile units. Let's have a look here. I'm not gonna classify the ancient Stegodon as a missile unit, because even though it kind of is, it's primarily a melee infantry. Uh, melee uh, Cavalry, uh, melee, melee monster, in my opinion. Um, that's their primary use. All right, so then we've got the Troglodon. This is a tier five unit. It's a missile unit, uh, primarily missile unit, but it can also go into melee. I would put this as a tier as well, um, with the Coatl and other ones. The only reason I'm not putting it as a Doomstack is because it's feral, which means it goes rampage. If it didn't go rampage, I'd put it as a Doomstack. This is a very good unit, but rampage just is such an anti-player garbage ability that it makes it very difficult to keep them under control uh, once they're once they're a little bit damaged because rampage can afflict them at like 25 percent damage um so it's really important that if you're going to go with troglodons that you have some heroes nearby them in order to use cold-blooded to stop their bloody rampage because once they're in prolonged melee they can do go down really quickly so you got to be very careful with them okay so other Missile. Okay, oh, the rest of these I'm going to classify as melee monsters. Okay, all right, let's start with the uh, Bastilodon, so the, the piece of crap one. All right, this one's here, Tier 2. I think it used to be Tier 3. They're not great. Um, they're slow, they're not amazing in melee, but they're not horrible. <laughs> they're not really one of my favorite units. My, my recommendation is just wait. Or if you if you're going to get a tier two monster, get the Ark of Sotek. This one here I'd put as a tier two because oh sorry tier B, because um, it's a tier two unit, and the edge that it has over the uh, the regular 
um, Bastilodon is that its special ability can do tons of damage to melee infantry. Um, which, if you're at tier 2, that's probably the primary enemy that you're going to be facing. Uh, you know what? You know what? This one here, I'm actually going to put it as A tier because it's tier 2. Um, I've seen these guys here get loads and loads of kills. That They can do really well. Uh, but because this one here doesn't have any special abilities, it can go rampaging. Um, I don't know if this one here can, actually. Let me just confirm that. Do they not rampage? They don't rampage, yeah. This ability here is what I'll talk about. The Arc of Sotek. That's really bloody strong. Yeah, especially got a whole bunch of them. Whereas the Feral Bastilodon... Let me have a look at the price difference. 250 compared to 162. Yeah, definitely worth the difference. Definitely. In terms of their melee stats, it's basically... It is identical. So, yeah, if... Since there doesn't require any other building, if you were at tier 2 and you got the Taming Pen, 100% go Bastilodon Arc of Sotek over Feral Bastilodon. 100%. Like, there's... You know what? I would say since they're, since they're at tier 2, this one here, there's no reason to ever recruit it. There's no reason to ever recruit this as opposed to an Arc of Sotek. These are just vastly better. The only reason you'd go for it is just because it's cheaper. But honestly, um... I reckon one of these is worth three of them, maybe two, uh, just because of that special ability. Because what you can do is charge into melee, drop down the ability, and then run out, um, as long as the stuff's not too quick. So, yeah, way more useful. All right, then let's you let's talk about um, let's talk about Croxagors. Okay, so we got the regular Croxagors here. I'm not a huge fan of them, but they're not the most awful thing ever. I'm going to put them at C tier. Same thing with the Sacred Croxagors. You can make them work. But you do have to work fairly hard to make them, you know, do what they want to do, which is dish out damage. They're not particularly fast. They can rampage. I think there's a lot weak. There's, they've got a lot of weaknesses opposed to their strengths. They're very vulnerable to missiles. They don't have shields. Um, as far as monstrous infantry are concerned, or even at the tier that they have recruited, I just think you can do a lot better with Lizardmen. So I, I don't really recommend them. The single entity Croxagor, the Croxagor Lord, is actually quite strong, especially in the low tier stage of the campaign, so I just, I usually don't gravitate towards these units and don't find them particularly useful. Um, if you're playing as Nakai, they can be okay at the beginning of the campaign, um, and you can make them a doom stack, but you got to put a lot of effort into it. Alright, now let's talk about the Feral Stegodon. What tier is the Feral Stegodon at? Let me just check. Is that tier 3? Yeah. 275, 300, okay. Alright, I'm going to put that as trash. There's really no reason to get a Feral Stegodon over a, um, a, uh, what's it called? The, uh, Solar Engine. Doesn't have a missile attack, uh, rampages, not as, anywhere near as good in melee as its, uh, stronger cousin. D I just, I just don't get them. Uh, it's okay if you start off with one, but phase it out as quickly as possible, I think. Uh, just, just not really worth it. They're just sort of redundant now. Alright, uh, and then let's go Ancient Stegodon. Alright, now I've often dumped on Ancient Stegodons, but they're not actually a bad unit. It's just that they're a tier 5 unit compared to a tier f tier 4 here. And even though they're better in melee, uh, they don't have uh, as much range as the, uh, the Ballistodon. And uh, they are more expensive. So I'm actually going to put the Ancient Stegodon as C tier, just because for the tier that it's at... And for its utility on the battlefield, I feel as though it just doesn't really have a lot of value. Especially considering that the Engine of the God is at the same tier. Let me just confirm that, actually. So, yeah, we've got Ancient Stegodon there. And Engine of the God is w lower tier than it. Oh, uh, not really, because you also need Ziggurat of the Old Ones as well. So it requires two buildings, whereas this one only requires one. Right, it's the same cost as well as the Ancient Stegodon. And this one here, it's got such good abilities. So it's got... Come on, let me just... Oh, look at that. We've got the Burning Alignment, which is... I usually call it the Solar Beam Cannon or whatever. Um, it's... This is such a good uh, ability to just, just annihilate in infantry units like crazy. This is also a good extra 5% uh, damage resistance. That's, that's ward save. Um, in a small aura around it. And then also it acts as a uh, Winds of mag uh, Magic battery. So really quite good. I don't know why you'd ever go Ancient Stegodon over either of these two. So in terms of in terms of where to put this, um, I'd actually put it as a Doomstack. 
yeah it's just i usually go with this one here just because it is more convenient you get it earlier because this is a tier 5 unit if it requires a tier 5 building to be placed it, it is a tier 5 one um and usually what i do with the engines of the gods oops, is i place that in i have a hero like at skink priest put them on the engine of the god and then you don't need a spam of them because they are very expensive so you could put them under um a tier as well but these this can totally work as a doomstack spam and you could pretty much beat anything and it probably actually be even tougher than this it'd just be way more expensive since the the uh, lizardman economy is not super good my recommendation is definitely go regular stegodons over this one because th anything that this can do so anything this can do this one can do as well if you just got a skink priest in your army one or two of them uh, okay, then we'll talk about the um, Bastilladon with the Revification Crystal. I am not a huge fan of this unit at all. I'm going to put it as C tier, because I don't think it's total trash, because at least it does have a special ability. But the amount that it heals is not very good. It does revive entities, which is okay. Um, I would say that this unit is a really good one for smaller unit scales, but on ultra unit scale, which is what I base this stuff off, I don't really value it that much. I think that you're much better off using Winds of Magic with like a Skink Oracle or a Life Slam, as opposed to using this one here. You're better off just getting, like if you want a healer, just get a Wizard, don't use this one here, because you only get 7 uses of it and it's just not much healing. Anyway. Alright, next up, the Feral Carnosaur. Now, despite this one being able to um, go Rampage, I will put this at Doomstack. It is a Tier 5 unit, but it is very strong. This is the kind of unit that, even if it does go into Rampage, it's so strong that it's okay if it, it's left in melee for a bit, because it's significantly stronger in melee than the Troglodon. And as long as you've got a healer and some kind of support, getting a spam of these guys can totally work because their animation works really well for them. And that's one of the reasons why they're going up top is because they jump around a lot. And as they're jumping around, it disrupts a whole bunch of units, making it actually very difficult to uh, to hit. So its melee defense doesn't matter anywhere near as much of its, as its actual animation. Uh, their animation making it its strong point. Then... Finally, we've got the Dreadsaurians. Now, I think this one here is the Feral variant. Let me just confirm that. Uh, th okay, so the, the greener one is the Feral one. So, yep, okay. Both of them at uh, Tier 5 and subject to, to unit caps. Um, these are the strongest unit in your roster, but these are absurdly expensive. And they're also so huge that sometimes it's not actually worth it. Like, these guys struggle to walk through breaches in, in settlements. Um, I definitely wouldn't put them as trash. I'd put the Feral variant at C tier and the regular Dreadsaurian at B tier. Um, you definitely could make a Doomstack off them if you're, like, at the very end of the campaign. You have absolutely tons of money. But it's completely unnecessary. It's not optimal at all, and um, you would need a ton of a, a ton of tier five settlements. Which for the Lizardmen, you're looking at turn like hundred to no, not hundred turn like hundred and fifty to two hundred before that'll even be the case. So this is not really a recommended Doomstack at all. Um, I think these are just in introduced into the game just for the lols kind of, um, but they're actually not a very effective unit at all. The Doomstack that I had sent in of them. Uh, a long time ago really didn't perform anywhere near as well. It was, it was actually very difficult uh, to use them just because of how cumbersome they were and they're, they're just basically an armor-piercing missile soaker. They're just, they're just too big. Uh, their size works against them more than anything. But anyway, that's the Lizardman uh, unit roster there. Now let's briefly talk about um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Blessed mm -hmm. units. So, every Blessed unit has like a special ability over the, the regular ones. Now the thing about the blessed units is that you can't guarantee them any at any point in the campaign. So in this one, this campaign here, this was a live stream campaign from ages ago, I think. Turn 146. And these are all of the blessed units that I've got. So, so far, I've, I don't think I... Uh, maybe I've recruited a blessed Stegodon. But I haven't gotten any, say, blessed Bastilodons in the entire campaign. So there's no guarantee that you're going to get anything specific. This is why I didn't put them on the tier list. Now, there's a big misconception with them that all of the blessed units have perfect vigor. This is not true at all. So, you 
just need to read them all, and I don't know exactly what you, each of their benefits are over them, but if you have a look at the, like, the Cold One Spear Riders, generally speaking, Blessed Units don't go Rampage, but there are some that do. So, the Saurus ones do go Rampage. Uh, that one goes Rampage. Um, so the Blessed Horn ones don't go Rampage. Uh, these ones here, Rampage. Um, they Rampage. Yeah, it's just, it's basically just the cavalry blessed ones that don't rampage compared to, um, their regular variant. The, uh, the blessed chameleon skinks, they have extra range. So, what I would do, if, if you're looking for a tier for them, what I would do is the variant of wherever they are, just look at them and then just up them one tier. So, if you're looking at the, uh, the cold one, um, spear rider, uh, blessed unit, put it as C tier. If you're looking at the Blessed Stegodon, it's like Doomstack Plus. Um, they're really, really good because they've got extra range and extra ammunition, and they're actually cheaper on upkeep. They're absolutely fantastic. I'd spam them if I could, but <laughs> I'm lucky to get two an entire campaign. Um, every Blessed unit has is better than its variant. There's no downside to it. Just It's just a matter of rarity. That's all it really comes down to. Some of them do have perfect vigor, so the Blessed Stegodon has perfect vigor. This one here doesn't. Uh, the Blessed Bacillodon Solar Engine, ble uh, perfect vigor. But it's not just perfect vigor as well, so looking at that, that's twice as much ammunition as a regular variant, and it's also got longer range. All of that, really good, and it's freaking cheaper as well. It's like, if we have a look, that, that's 450 in this particular army here, right? Nice. I was in the middle of a really day, day doom stack of um, this stuff. If we have a look at the Stegodon, oh, that one's the same price. It's Okay, I thought it was a little bit cheaper. Maybe maybe I was mistaken. Maybe they tweaked that at some point. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't been playing a little of this lately. Um, but yeah, still their stat bonuses. There's no downside to them. It's just a matter of um, uh, availability. That's all it really comes down to. Anyway, that is the tier list here. Um, what I'm going to do is, because you guys have been so uh, favorable towards these tier lists, if this one does really well, which, let's just say, well, I'm not going to give any um, <laughs> um, quotas. Um, I will do another one tomorrow for the Skaven, because uh, that's one that I want to get done as well. Anyway, I hope this helps. This one here was a little bit more difficult to do because there's just so many, like, C-tier and trash units compared to, like, it's a lot more lopsided than the Dark Elf and High Elf one, whereas the High Elves, they had, it's pretty much even across the board. Uh, they had a lot more Doomstack units. Uh, Lizardmen have a lot of, uh, dead weight in their roster. And it just comes down to, I suppose, what you enjoy using. Don't use this as a fun factor. Come use it as a how difficult it is going to be to get some value out of it in difficult situations but if you just want to have fun and you like you see feral cold ones then go for it you can make it you can make it work with any of these it's just a case of making it work with these units is going to be easier than making it work with with these but it's totally possible to to spam your campaign full of cold ones cold one spear riders and win you just, you're going to have to work really hard for it, that's all. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.